Okay guys, we're back with the shoe box. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to convert the chain drive system to the new belt drive that they have and I'll also be replacing the factory uh, older model pistons with the new tool steel pistons that they make now. So I'm going to be replacing these two and also the chain drive in the system making it a belt drive. Alright guys, next up, we're going to start disassembling this thing. Went ahead and got all the tools together that we're going to need. Uh, we're going to need Allens. We're going to need possibly a crescent wrench. And you're going to need all your open-end wrenches to fit all your fittings and the uh, ratchet to take off your motor mounts there. So you're going to need some uh, wrenches. Just get together what you need. I'm not going to mention the sizes here. You can Figure it out because your setup may be different. Um, also, one of the things you're going to need is a dental pick because <coughs> we need to scribe the uh, air cylinder block. We need to scribe on the uh, base here where it's mounted so we know it lines back up uh, when we reinstall everything. So let's go ahead and get started with disassembling this thing. All right, one of the first things I want to do is scribe the base here of the uh, air cylinder block just so I know where it is and I'll put it back to the exact, exact same place when I reinstall it. Alright next up I'm just gonna remove the male quick connect from the low pressure side out of the cylinder block. Alright next up I wanna remove the uh, tension spring here so get your proper allen and remove this Alright, next up I'm going to remove the rods, the pistons. So let's start by loosening the allens here, the set screws. Alright, next up I'm going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the motor from the uh, frame. And uh, that way we can start getting the chain and linkages and sprockets and stuff loose so when, when we remove the cylinder block that's all out of there so let's go ahead and remove the motor this here through so I went to the back of the motor I'm going back here and I have needle nose of course the motor is disconnected but you only have two wires here basically the white one and the blue one. There. See, done. Motor comes out. All right, before we pull the block out, let's go ahead and remove the switch. Two screws on top. Alright, now that we've removed the screws from the cylinder block top and bottom, let's go ahead and slide it out. And there you go. Alright, if your unit is well used like mine, while we have all this stuff apart, let's go ahead and grab some cleaner and uh, give this whole entire thing a cleaning. As you can see, I've got grease and oil everywhere. Let's go ahead and clean all this up before we start putting in new parts and reassembling. As recommended by the shoebox people, uh, here at the bottom of the cylinder block, right here, there is this little piece uh, and there's an o-ring under there. Basically as they recommend, just hook this up to your scuba tank or whatever and open the valve really, really slow or if you have just a regular compressor for your garage. You only need like 100 PSI. I just used my scuba tank and just cracked it really, really slow. And this piece shot out. And as you can see, there's an O-ring in there. So I'm going to replace that. And it's, I can see why this thing was leaking from the bottom because the O-ring is shot. 
So I'm pulling pieces of rubber off. But just another little tip, while you got the block out, you might as well replace this. And I'm gonna put a replace it with the white O-ring. Let's go ahead and remove these two screws here on the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and remove the sprocket from the uh, motor. All right, let's go ahead and remove the uh, sprocket from the cylinder block assembly. Okay, let's go ahead and install the new part. Being careful to line, make sure that you line the little slot that's cut on the axle there. Make sure you line the set screw with that slot. There you go. All right, I went ahead and ground off a uh, another flat spot. It's got two set screws on this part. Uh, there's one. There's the other. Well, let's go ahead and put this part on the drive shaft here and tighten it down. Just push it all the way in. All right, there's a new part installed. Alright guys, let's start the assembly process of the unit now that we have everything clean, all the parts are here. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the motor. I don't think it matters if you start with the motor or the cylinder block first. But let's go ahead and start with the motor, um, things we can uh, get prepared. Let's take the rod here. You also have a bag of washers or spacers. They're actually spacers, aluminum spacers. Let's put them on. Stick it through. You want to take your other part here, screw it on. And give it a tighten. Alright, let's go ahead and do that for all the rest of them. Okay, now that we have that done and the mounting bolts are installed with the new spacers and uh, parts, let's go ahead and set it to the side and uh, do the next step. All right, the next step we're going to go ahead and install the cylinder block. I'm going to take the belt, put the belt on it. And go ahead and set it in here and start lining this thing up. So I'm getting the cylinder block lined up. Okay, now the cylinder block is installed and it's lined up with the marks here on the bottom and uh, both sides and on the front here of the bottom of the cylinder block. The tight is also uh, top is also tight and that's done. The belt's already placed behind. Um, like I said in the video, you do want to go ahead and put the belt behind the pulley first because there's not very much space. There's like maybe an eighth of an inch between the back of the housing and this pulley. So you want to put the belt on first. I'm going to put these screws back on here. Let's make sure we don't snug them just yet because we're going to need to put tension in the belt. Okay, now that we have the motor in the frame and the screws are very loose, we also now have the belt that is around the pulley. We're going to now put the belt around the drive pulley on the motor. And then after you do that, you can go ahead and tension your motor, move your motor over to take up belt tension. And you just want to make sure it's not sloppy and it's not super tight. You don't want to stretch it like a rubber band. So let's go ahead and do that. 
All right, after getting the belt around the draw pulley on the motor, go ahead and uh, torque your motor down. So I got enough slack or enough uh, pressure on the belt now where it's not sloppy and it's not super tight. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten the four mounting bolts down. All right, now that we've tightened the mounting bolts down, I got enough tension in the uh, belt drive. I got the mounting block assembled. Let's go ahead and put the uh, rest of the unit together here. I'm going to go ahead and put the new arm on it here and uh, install it and attach it. All the linkages together and uh, we should be ready to rock and roll. All right, now that the linkage is uh, together, let's go ahead and put the uh, pistons in and we'll be done. All right, guys, we got everything together, fully assembled. Let's go ahead and run this thing for the first time. Uh, let's just see what it sounds like. guys we've reached the end of this video I want to say thank you to everybody who watched the video um, I really appreciate everybody watching you know what I do um, secondly I also want to thank Tom for making the shoebox Tom K that is uh, for making the shoebox compressor great product uh, life saver time saver uh, money saver <laughs> I mean, it just, it, it's, it's a great product. I mean, if any of you guys fill at a dive shop, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You spend five bucks a fill, some of you spend more. You also go to a dive shop to pick your tank up and it's not filled up to the full 4,500 PSI. You can do all this yourself now. You, you don't need to rely on uh, outside source to fill your tank. Um, so thank Tom, thanks to all the viewers. If you guys have any questions about this product, please go to www shoeboxcompressors.com email Tom K uh, watch his do-it-yourself videos he's got all of them on there that's how I learned how to work on this thing um, I would recommend that highly because he tells you all the little intricacies of working on this unit and you need to understand that and you need to know that I in this video didn't go through that so make sure you watch his videos this is just something I do for fun It's not a replacement of his videos as I've told Tom this is just something I did for fun and it's part of my hobby so I made a video on it but please refer to Tom's videos <laughs> alright so thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next one